All right, second time filming this video. First time, for some reason, the GoPro didn't use my mic. Just used regular GoPro audio, which obviously didn't pick up anything. But yeah, we headed to go grab some oil. Time for another oil change on this bad boy. I won't bore you with that. If you guys want to know how to do an oil change in the Hawk 250, I'll leave a link to that video below. Very, very simple. Oh, I don't want to be too loud for the doggy. I don't want to scare him. Oh, yeah. You know what's something I really like about this bike? I know I've been talking about a lot about getting a second bike and I know I put this next thing I'm about to say in one of the five things I hate about it but it's also one of the things I do like about it is the fact that it is so slow and that means I can do this which is going wide open on the throttle whenever I upgrade my bike I'm probably gonna get something like a 600 or a 750 and uh, that is not going to have the same sensation. I'm not going to be able to just go wide open throttle when uh, going around the back streets like I am right now. That would get so dangerous and so fast so quickly that it's just not a thing. You really have to have way more throttle control. You got to be able to manipulate and modulate the throttle between one fourth and a half the whole time. If you're driving reasonably. And that's why I think this is a, a really fun bike to have because you can just want, romp on it the whole time without worrying about too much. But at the same time, it doesn't really prepare you for a bike that's a lot faster and twitchier because you might fall into some habits. Like I've already fell into some habits of just leisurely pulling on the throttle way too hard. In other bikes, that would get me in trouble very quickly, both with the law and with the pavement. You gotta keep that in mind when you do upgrade your bike everything's gonna be different I firmly believe that when you get good at riding a motorcycle you get good at riding that specific motorcycle because every motorcycle is gonna feel a little bit different it's gonna take a while to get comfortable with how that exact one works there's so many different factors that it's a new experience every time but of course, the more different motorcycles you continue to ride, the faster and better you will be at adapting to those new rides and their different positions and ways to ride. So I want to get into different type of riding. I want to do some off-roading, some sport touring. I want to bang some twisties, hit some track day stuff. I really want to get the full experience. So there's a new bike that has kind of entered the reins of my potential second bike and it's the naked version of the Suzuki GSX-Rs which is the GSX-S750 that's the one I'm looking at the 1000 looks really nice too but the 750 is only like $8,000 brand new 120 horsepower has something like 90 foot pounds of torque it's just an insane bike it seems like that bike has it all for the price range to be honest are you fucking dumb ah uh, some people don't know how four ways go but as I was saying, that naked bike seems perfect. It, it's beautiful to me. I absolutely love the way it looks. I know it's kind of like street fighter-y. Got a lot of hard edges. It's almost like a pregnant MT-07 or something. But I just love the way it looks. The fairing on the bottom, the crazy transformer looking headlight. The fact that you can put clip-ons on it. You can get these uh, handlebars. If you guys don't know what clip-ons are, they're basically handlebars that aren't what look like bike handlebars like this 
but they're handlebars that clip on to the actual front shocks themselves. So say if I had these on this bike, my hands would be like down here, like a sports bike. You could have clip-ons that clip right here and right here and then move all the controls onto those bars. And that's how you get that aggressive feel. If you do that with a sport bike like the Jixxis 1000 or 750, it already has the rear pegs kind of seated backwards a little bit. So when you're in that leaned over position, you're not running into your knees. Because that can be the issue if you try to convert a regular like standard sitting up position bike. Like if I tried to do that to this bike and I was leaned over, my knees are so high up because of the mid pegs that I would just be like crunched up. That's why sport bikes have the pegs seated in the back and the feet are kind of more pointed down a little bit. Even though you don't want your feet pointed down. You know what I mean. At an angle. $8,000 brand new. I'm sure out the door at the dealership it's going to end up being around $9,000. That bike is incredibly nice. Anything even close to it in terms of specs is way more expensive. Like three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 more expensive. But at the same time, $8,000 is so much. I like the idea of a new motorcycle. But on the used market for like three, four thousand dollars $4,000, I can get something you know, uh, R6 or something with 15,000 miles or 20,000 miles. Those are available. There's so many R6s around me. I don't know what it is about R6s in the Northeast. Or maybe it's just Rhode Island in general. But that's like the most popular bike on Facebook Marketplace. A million R6s. And I, that's just not really like the bike that I want. It's just so available. I don't really like the seating position on it, it's super aggressive, I don't really like how the RPMs work, we have to wind it up all the way, but, you know, if the price is right, and it makes sense, then I would, I would still get it. But I'd rather have an R1, there's also a lot of R1s for like four or five thousand dollars, there's a lot out there. You can also get a quick shifter for the 750 and I believe the 1000 comes with a quick shifter of the GSX-X and that's something I really want to be able to use my my bike for track days because a bike like that you can just put some good tires on it some track tires on it then head to the track and beat the hell out of those things will be really fun on a sport bike even something like a r7 doesn't go too fast the issue with the r7 is the r7 is like the same price as a gsx 750 and the difference between those two bikes is crazy the gsx 750 is way more powerful way more bike for your money better in every way i'd say except for the fact that it's not a sports bike 
so it doesn't have the sports for like egronomics and it doesn't look like yamaha not gonna lie the r7 is a sick looking bike But then when I start getting into sport bikes, the Aprilia RS660 is like the perfect bike. If it wasn't so expensive, if I had more money to spare in my life right now, then I would consider the RS660. We'll see. We'll see how this channel does in the next like six months. If I can get to the point where I'm making like 500 bucks a month off my YouTube channel from making motorcycle videos, I will put that 500 bucks in to buying a nice ass bike brand new from the dealer I want to build a good relationship with a dealership so I can take test drives on their bikes help build the channel up that way too and I think the step one to building a good relationship from dealership is buying a new bike from them turn around over here I'm gonna let this van go so I have some room to work I'm very, I'm very much considering the naked Suzuki. The problem with that is, is I kind of want a little bit more popular bike just for search engine optimization in terms of building the channel on YouTube. But I also don't want that to really be a deciding factor on what bike I get. At the same time, if I want to do make a living out of this thing, I do need to make these calculated decisions, I guess. I've been doing this content creation thing for like a decade and the decision making has probably been the worst part. Uh, I've been in a lot of good scenarios that I overthought my way out of, to say the least. Damn, I can't believe I almost have 1400 miles on this thing already. Actually, I can't believe that. But when I bought this thing, I told myself I'm going to use it every single day, save money on gas, and get as good as I can at riding the damn thing. That's exactly what I did. I think that's part of the reason why I got kind of bored with it so quickly. I just want more. And once I tried my friend's Harley, his Sportster, got a little bit of taste of more acceleration. that again that big engine feels different shocking how slow people take curves just about everybody on the planet has a car that's so over engineered for what they actually do with it like the grip levels that exist in cars 
compared to how people actually drive them on the road is insane. Like if you're losing control in a car, you gotta actually be terrible at driving or be so good that you're pushing it to the absolute limit. There's like no in between. Unless you ride, drive like a rear wheel drive truck in the snow or some shit. <laughs> And then you're gonna be spitting out everywhere. Ask me how I know. guys we're nearing the end of the vlog just a few turns left and i'm gonna be buying my oil and heading home thank you guys so much for all the support i appreciate it don't forget to like and subscribe if you got to this point in the video i'd very much appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button right now i'm getting about 96 percent of my views from people who aren't subscribed to my channel i don't even know how that works but i'll take it peace